Today we're going to learn how to make an infrared camera. Please, when you do this, be careful and use all the necessary precautions. There is a risk of shocking yourself on the capacitor, which is quite dangerous. So why are we interested in looking at things in infrared? Well, plants reflect a huge amount of infrared light, but that's usually blocked by the filter that's in most digital cameras. By replacing that filter with our own, made from exposed negative color film, we can look at how plants reflect infrared light, and that gives us a sense of how healthy they are. We'll be modifying a Canon A490, which you can buy for only $60 online. So, <clears throat> we're here to take apart the Canon PowerShot A490. Um, this is what it looks like. First, you want to take the batteries out. I'll uh, put them inside this little thing. Take out your memory card. And uh, you're going to want to look at the different uh, screw holes there are. There's one here. There's one here, and uh, there's two, or there's one here, and there's two inside, inside here. So that's one, two, three, four, five on the exterior. You want to take a really nice fine screwdriver and begin opening those up. Usually, I start with the outside ones. These can be pretty tough, so don't don't um, uh, strip your screwdriver. You want to push in really quite hard and rotate slowly. If you need, you could put in some like uh, WD-40 or something. But uh, there you go. There's one. And here's a here's a trick that I use. Um, I take a piece of a roll of tape, turn it inside out. Or actually, I'm going to do this lengthwise. And keep your screws on that. And you can keep them in chronologic order. Um, so I've got the bottom one, let me get the side one, there we go, let me get the one inside the battery case, this one's silver. And then I'm going to get the ones inside of the cable connection slot. Sometimes you need to shake them out. There we go. Now, there's nothing really holding this thing together. So you could kind of use your fingernails. I find that that's a really good place to do it. You can see there's a little thing where the, the speaker is. If you put your fingernail in there and pull it out, that'll work. You, you don't want to stick too much stuff in there because you, you risk kind of jamming up and messing up the electronics. But if you do need to, take a flathead screwdriver, slide it in, and just kind of give it some leverage. Um, but uh, you really don't want to be forcing too many things because you risk really, uh, really destroying it. So. Just to review, um, this is with the display up. Uh, we got uh, one here, one inside the case, two inside the uh, cable connection cover, and uh, one over here in terms of screws. Now, we remove this case. I'm just going to put this aside. We don't really need it. Um, uh, and then this thing will kind of come off. Put that up there. And now we have our second set of screws, the interior screws. What we want to do is, if we're removing the filter, it's underneath the lens. So I mean, you shouldn't really do this much, but you can kind of look in there. It's going to be behind the lens. It's actually going to be right up against the, uh, the CCD, or the sensor. At this point, you really want to be careful because there's a capacitor in here that runs the flash. Capacitors are like batteries, but they can store a great deal more energy. And if you touch the capacitor leads, you can get shocked pretty badly. This camera is nice because it doesn't really expose those leads so that you might accidentally touch them. But this here is the capacitor. Don't stick a screwdriver in there and touch those. You can get, you can get quite badly hurt. Um, and I believe a capacitor of that size can even melt the tip of a screwdriver. Um, so yeah, this is like you know, get an adult uh, or a more responsible adult if you are an adult. Um, 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove the screws. Uh, there should be three. There's one here. I believe this is one. And there's one right there. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen them up. Be careful not to lose the screws inside the casing because sometimes it can be really, really hard to get them out. Like they'll just bounce around in there forever. Um, so yeah, just move slowly. These screws are actually not the same as the earlier silver screws. They're shorter, so you got to keep them separate. Now I'm going to very carefully lift this. Uh, there's a clip over here, the same spot the, the back cover was released. And if you carefully go in there, I'm going to actually swap for this flat head. I have a nice reversible screwdriver there. You can pick that out. And then this thing should swing up. What's stopping you there, don't yank it, is that there's a ribbon cable here and a ribbon cable here. Both of these have to be preserved and, and you have to be very careful with them. The way to do this is you lift up this little membrane by sliding a screwdriver underneath it. Don't yank, because uh, there's some very fine wires built into that membrane that you could uh, dislodge. At this point, this thing's not going to go anywhere unless we remove this ribbon cable. This is probably the hardest part to get right without destroying your camera, so pay attention. Uh, I'm going to slide this screwdriver right in there, and uh, putting my finger here to apply pressure and hold it in place, I'm just going to draw the screwdriver in this direction. What that'll do is gently pull out the ribbon cable. There it is. That just came out of this little slot here. Now, those wires on there are exposed, so it's very delicate. Basically, don't touch them or mess with them. And what you can do is just carefully bend this backwards. Um, we're going to have to reinsert that, but first, let's open this up. There we go. Gently. And this should swing all the way around and stay open. There we go. Now I can release this back down, but remember not to put it back together in that position. This has to go up, this thing down, and then, and then you close it up. Um, let's refocus here on, I'm switching back to a Phillips head screwdriver. This, which is the sensor. Now the sensor uh, has three screws holding it in. But because Canon didn't want those screws to come loose or even move at all, they put a little bit of glue on each one. So this can present a challenge. If you're lucky, like in this one, the glue is not really covering it very much. But on some of them, it can actually even obscure the hole. So what you want to do is you want to have a very good screwdriver that's not stripped at all. Because if you strip these screws, you're uh, not going to be able to make much progress. Often, we'll start with the easiest one. This one was barely glued in at all, so it's already coming loose. Very carefully, I'm going to remove that screw and put it on our little strip of sticky stuff. Now I'm going to try to go for the second one. If I can't get a clear grip on this, well this one came out pretty well, I think the quality of my screwdriver is actually paying off quite a bit. Um, but if I can't get a clear grip on it, it's really important not to force it because you're going to strip the screw or the, you know, and then you won't be able to do anything. So. If need be, you can kind of very gently try to get this stuff out of the way, but you have to be very careful not to disrupt, disrupt or break this ribbon cable, which is laying over it. This ribbon cable connects the sensor directly to the circuit board here. Um, so, you know, if you break that, the whole camera is basically uh, going to be dead. This is a really, really nice, easy one. So, apologies if you run into more trouble than I did, but I think that getting Spending a little bit more on your screwdriver. This one was uh, maybe five dollars, but it's a metal. It's a you know like a shiny metal um, finish. I find that those, a lot of the ones that are black colored, uh, they tend to just shred if you put them into little screws like this. In any case, we've gotten this. Now I'm going to switch back to the flathead. If you have two separate screwdrivers, this is easier for you. And right here at the corner, next to the screw we removed. You can kind of put the flathead screwdriver underneath there, and I'm going to just carefully lever that up. 
Right now, I can feel all the other glue stopping me from raising this, so I gotta be really careful. I'm gonna try over here. There, that end is up. Now I'm gonna try over here. There we go. And then one last one over here. There are little pegs kind of guiding this, so we shouldn't have too much trouble putting it back in place. Now we have to be very careful. I'm not even gonna to speak too loud because um, if I breathe in there, some dust might get in. For example, there's a bit of this, this glue sitting on the edge, and I don't wanna you know, even cough or anything and blow that glue in onto the, the sensor. I'm gonna peel this back carefully. And what you can see is here on the back is actually the sensor. So don't touch that. If you get fingerprints on that, it's gonna cause low, it's gonna you know, reduce your image quality. We really just wanna step lightly here. So I'm gonna hold this open with one finger and watch where I point. This thing here is a rubber gasket. It's holding our filter in place, the IR block filter. That's that reddish stuff right there. Don't try to remove the cover of the sensor like I once did uh, because you will, you will irrevocably destroy the camera. Um, uh, so I'm gonna reach in here and honestly, having done this a few times, I think it's, it's a legitimate way to do this, to, to hold this open, try to pull back this gasket and literally shake, this, shake the filter out. So that worked. Uh, I should be careful because I actually pulled the gasket off. So remember which way the gasket goes and put it back in. So here's our filter. I'm gonna push that out of the way. You know, you might need this thing. Uh, in some of the setups we uh, do, you need to keep that filter. So don't touch it with your fingers because you'll put fingerprints all over it and the, the coating will get damaged. I'm gonna tamp down those little, um, those little uh, tabs that held the gasket in place. But basically, I'm just gonna let this thing, the sensor, fall back in place. And I'm gonna push it in gently until it's uh, seated back where those pegs will guide it, will, will hold it even. Um, sometimes if you've moved the glue around, you've gotta kinda fiddle around with it a little bit. And also, if the ribbon cable itself has come loose, you have to be very careful to reseat that. So, let's see. This is not going in as easily as I'd like, so I'm gonna pull it back open, see if I've put anything in the way. There we go, there's a nice click. All right, so it clicked in place as, this, as the pegs were reseated. Here is a peg. And here's a pig. Now, this thing is pretty sturdy. There's glue in the way there, but I think I can just reinsert those screws and we'll be fine. Let me switch back to the Phillips head. And you gotta be really careful at this point not to drop the screws into the casing, because um, I've done that and it's basically impossible to get them back out. So just be very careful. Some people have magnetized screwdrivers to help this. There's one. Don't tighten it too far, just uh, get all three in there and then tighten them down. Otherwise it might be hard to get one of your screws in. I'm doing the easy ones first. Here's the third one. This one is blocked a little bit by glue, but I'm gonna just uh, hope that the glue gets pushed out of the way. Yeah, that's fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of crank these down. Not too hard, because who knows? Someday you might wanna go and put a filter back in there. Okay, our sensor is now closed. So we can kind of breathe a little easier now. But we need to make sure we do the correct order of operations to get everything back together. So lifting this panel that we removed, I'm gonna slide this all back down. You have to kind of sometimes move it around a bit to get it situated, right? But there are pegs 
here, here, and I think that's it. Those two pegs, they need to be seated properly. Push them down a little bit. And then this up here should click back into place. Being careful not to touch the capacitor, make sure it's well situated. The thing shouldn't really be moving around. It's seated properly. Now, we've got to get this ribbon cable back into its slot. I'm going to screw this thing in with at least one screw first to just keep it kind of in place so I don't have to worry about it. And then I'll show you how to reinsert the ribbon cable. There you go. So this thing is like pretty solidly in place now with just that one screw. What I'm going to do here is carefully line up this ribbon cable with its original slot. If your fingers are kind of in the way, it can be tough. And you, you can use a tool like a screwdriver or something to help lead this thing back in. Like I can't, oh, there we go. I'm having some trouble lining it up. So what I'm going to do is use the screwdriver. I'm going to switch back to the flathead. And I'm going to just line that thing up there. This is the back side that I'm touching, so I'm not touching the live leads. And I've gotten into the slot. Now, very carefully, you want to push that down into the slot. But you don't want to crease this ribbon cable or scratch it or anything like that. You just want to apply even pressure and slowly slide it in there. You'll see it. You shouldn't have to bend or, or, or any, do anything to this thing to get that to work. And you don't want it to, yeah, like I said, basically don't let it crease. But now it's, it's pretty well situated in there. That's something I messed up a number of times and, and ruined some cameras. So be really careful on that step. Now, these pegs here and here that originally held this thing in place have to be reinserted. They're little, actually metal, metal pegs, metal slots that need to, or, or tabs. So now this thing is pretty well situated. These are actually your buttons, so if you don't line this up properly, you won't be able to operate the camera. Now is actually a good time. This is all done. Basically, we need to put the housing back on. But before I do, I'm going to actually insert the batteries and see if I can get the thing to turn on. Because at this point, it should function like a regular camera. So I'm going to get the battery cover and kind of insert it. You can kind of close the thing without the back cover on. And now I'm just going to turn it on, lift it up because the lens will extend. It says no memory card, and it seems to be working. The ribbon cable is well connected. If you want, tilt it up and actually try to get it to focus on something. Because if you've damaged any of the focus mechanisms, that won't work. Mine is doing fine. It says no memory card, so it won't be able to take a picture. But other than that, everything's to be, everything seems to be all right. I'm going to take the, well, actually, I guess I'll leave this thing on there. It's probably a good idea. And then um, get our, our rear cover over here again. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to add the remaining two interior screws. So one of them goes here. I, I've added this one already. And then there's one over here in the corner. So I kind of hold the screw onto the screwdriver with my finger. One more here in this corner. This is a tough one to do without losing the screw. There you go. If it helps, you can actually put something sticky on the screwdriver that will uh, help you keep the screws attached there. All right, now, putting this on here, I usually try to get this side attached first because that's the reverse of what I did to get it all on there. And then sometimes it'll take a little bit of wiggling to get that thing, oops, I've actually turned the thing on. To get this all to click in. But basically, with a little bit of effort, you can kind of get the whole thing, just kind of mush it a little bit. Not too hard. You shouldn't feel, shouldn't feel like you're breaking it. But all those tabs will kind of reinsert. Notice here, I've left a tab out. I've actually smushed it. So what I'm going to do is use the screwdriver push that tab back inside the casing and try to close that one more time. Just be careful of little things like that, but overall you should be pretty good now. 
Now I'm going to go back and reattach all of these screwdrivers, or these screws. And here. Close that. Two here. These screws all look to be about the same size, or exactly the same size, so I, as long as they're the right color, it shouldn't really matter. All the external screws are the same. Um, looks like my screwdriver is magnetized. Get that back in there. And our last two black screws. Personally, I don't really screw these in too hard because, you know, I don't like having to unscrew them if they're really, really uh, tightened down. And I figure, you know, if you've made a mistake, you want to be able to go back in or whatever. But, uh, you know, the most important thing at this stage is just to be careful that you're not forgetting any screws. It's always disconcerting to reassemble something and have a bunch of extra screws left over. All right, there you go. This is the Canon A490. I'm going to turn it on again. You can see it extends. There you go. And uh, just so you can see, I'll try to focus this. And in fact, um, just so that you can see, I will get a little cactus. see just infrared light, we still need to add our filter, which is the opposite of the one we just removed. Now you're going to need some color film negatives. Uh, you can use the end of a roll, or you can go to a photo store and ask for their you leftovers. Take some film. Uh, take the end of the roll, like this, and see that that is all uh, completely exposed and it's leaved a dark area. So, basically want to chop that out. And this will block all infrared light, or all visible light, and only allow infrared light through. So, you want to take this and cut it down so it'll fit over the lens of the camera. It's got to be quite small. So usually I do something kind of like this. And this little chip here is literally taped to the front of the camera. It should look something like this. Just make sure the lens can still move in and out without being obstructed. Now you're ready to go. Take this outside and you should be able to see how brightly plants reflect in infrared light. To learn more about how to use this imagery, go to publiclaboratory.org tools. Thanks a lot.